Hey, what's up guys? Gonna tackle a video today that is likely to be a bit controversial. Uh, the question of air nailers versus cordless nailers for production trim work or trim work in general. I'm gonna go over the differences, give you some of my thoughts. This will also be somewhat of a review on the DeWalt cordless nailers that I've been using for at least a few years now. Basically ever since they came out, I've had them. These are my second of each one. I've wore them out um, and I'm about ready to probably buy a third DeWalt 15 gauge again because it's getting a little bit worn also. So let's dig right into it. Look at some of these differences on these nailers. So looking at the question of are cordless nailers practical for production trimming, one of the biggest uh, aspects of this debate is going to be weight and size. This is a 15 gauge Hitachi, this is my workhorse, and then this is a 15 gauge DeWalt. And I don't have the exact specs, but I can tell you that there is a huge weight difference with these two guns, air versus cordless. For some guys doing punch list work, that might not be a big deal, but for me, it actually is a big deal. Um, a few years back, I actually attempted to trim homes entirely with cordless nailers, and that was back before these DeWalt were even released. I was doing it with Senko Fusion nailers, and I found that the repetition of lifting the gun so much, I actually was having my shoulders flare up just from the extra weight of lifting these guns. And I find even still, whenever I'm doing coffered ceilings and crown and beams, if I have a long streak where I'm doing overhead work, for a lot of days in a row, my shoulder will still start to flare up because typically on ceiling work, I'm usually using a cordless nailer up on scaffolding and stuff like that. But the weight difference is much, much less. So one of the biggest reasons that an air nailer is gonna be more conducive to production work is simply weight. I would venture to say I'm shooting at least 100,000 nails a year, if not 200,000 and that repetition over and over again it's going to make a big difference on your body and can affect the longevity of your career so air nailers for the bulk of my my nailing are still going to take precedence for that reason alone so now all that being said about the weight does that mean that cordless nailers do not have their place absolutely not I use cordless nailers all the time. Whenever I'm setting doors on a new home, I'm always using this cordless nailer. It works great and it's way just um, less cumbersome to drag than dragging a hose around everywhere. Dragging a hose gets to be a real pain when you're setting doors or you're up on scaffolding, something like that. However, whenever it comes time to nail off baseboard, I nail off a whole level at a time and I would much rather have uh, an air hose because the gun's lighter and it's gonna set the nail way more consistently than one of these guys. The one thing you do find with the cordless nailers if, is if you limp wrist it, meaning you don't have a lot of force behind that nailer whenever you fire it, uh, a lot of times you'll get inconsistent nail sets. So if you're nailing at an off angle or something and you can't get good pressure, sometimes it won't set the nail quite right um, and that can be a big pain. With an air nailer, very, very, very rarely do I have to go back and reset a nail. However, with cordless nailers, um, that is more of an issue. So the other big factor, just, just strictly looking at 15 gauge nailers for me, is the tip on the nailer. Um, you'll see right here, this is one of these, I don't know, smart point positive contact style tips on the nailer, and those will dent your woodwork. Um, you can't bump and fire without leaving a dent with this style nailer. Now it is nicer in some occasions like tongue and groove, shiplap, or something like that where you want to really get in there and um, very precisely place a nail. These style nailers are nice but whenever I'm really going to town nailing stuff off I would much rather have this style nailer that has a big rubber tip on it um, it just works much much better and also the force of bumping that nailer into the wood actually helps pull it tighter so 
The old Senko Fusions I had, I think did have a rubber tip style, but with the DeWalt 15 gauge, it is this uh, kind of positive contact tip and you gotta be careful with it that you don't dent your woodwork. Usually I'm always installing poplar, um, so it's a little bit harder. Uh, it's, it's quite a bit harder than pine. If you're using pine, you're really gonna have to be careful. But uh, as long as you're mindful of it, it works decent on poplar, but um, you can't just go to town, bam, 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 without having some damage issues there. Okay, so now let's talk about price and durability for a second. Price, this gun, bare tool, is gonna be 300 bucks or so. I buy them bare tool because I don't like the cheap little batteries that they, they sell with the kits. I like to run five amp hour batteries on all my cordless tools. Now they say those little batteries don't make a difference, but I can assure you from my experience, putting a bigger amp hour battery on the tool does make them run better. And I, have, I know of other guys who have these guns and have run them with the three amp hour or lower and they do not perform as well. So keep that in mind. But price wise, you're looking at 300 bucks without the battery versus probably 140 bucks or less for this Hitachi. So less than half the price. Longevity wise, this is my second nailer. I wore my first one out and this one's about wore out also. And um, you know, so I'm going through one of these every year and a half, two years. That's not real great. Is it still worth it to me to have the cordless nailer and to be able to grab and go? Absolutely. But for the bulk of my nailing, if I don't mind having a hose, these air nailers will just go and go and go and go without issues. And for 140 bucks, when I do have an issue, I'll throw it in the trash and not think twice about it and just pick up a new one. No big deal. So air wins on price and longevity by a long shot. Now, that being said, if you're a guy who's just doing punch list stuff and not, you know, shooting thousands and thousands of nails a week, it's not going to be a big deal for you. But if you're doing custom homes or production homes, um, these cordless nailers, the technology just is still not there yet to be practical, in my opinion, to use day in, day out, all day long. So next up, let's talk a little bit about the 18 gauge nailers. My review on this DeWalt 15 gauge, it works really well. It sets the nails pretty well almost all the time. It is very heavy. It's flywheel technology, so it's very top heavy, but it gets the job done and does what it's supposed to do. This 18 gauge, on the other hand, has been nothing but problems for me. I try to use this gun absolutely as minimally as possible because it does not set nails consistently. My first gun was terrible. It would leave at least every 10th nail proud. And what would happen is the driver would actually slip over the top of the nail. I think that's what was happening. Um, eventually, I just got so frustrated with that nailer, I threw it in the trash and just went out and bought another one, hoping that the, the t in time DeWalt had fixed some of their, their issues with it and this one would be better. This one has been better, but it still has issues. I usually shoot inch and a half 18 gauge nails and I still get issues. If you're bumping it down to inch and a quarter nails, it's even less on the issues uh, of setting proud nails. So not a fan of this nailer, but just because of the fact I only basically have DeWalt cordless um, tools I wanted to stay on the DeWalt battery platform, so this is what I got to deal with. So, um, from what I, the Senko Fusion was much better than, on oh, the 18 gauge, it was much better than this one. I haven't personally used the Milwaukee. Uh, I hear it's pretty decent, but I don't have any Milwaukee cordless tools, so there's no reason for me to really go that route unless it's just astronomically better. One thing I do like, DeWalt does sell these cordless nailers with the hook, so you can hook it on your tool bags, hook it on a ladder or whatever. I do on my air nailers, I buy these rafter hooks. I'll put a link in the video notes for these. 
But uh, you got to have a hook, hook it on scaffolding, hook it on your belt, hook it on ladders. That's something uh, really important. I wish more guns would come with a nice big hook like this. One of the issues that I have had with the DeWalt 15 gauge especially is feeding issues. You have to be really careful with what you clean the magazine area of this gun with because if you use something silicone based that's a little bit sticky and tacky, it'll build up and the nails stop feeding right and this magazine spring loses all its pressure to push the nails up and you'll start getting dry fires and it's super, super annoying. Um, another thing, you wanna be very careful that you don't use galvanized nails with that 15 gauge nailer. The galvanized nails come co with a coating on them and that builds up inside that tip where the drive pin is and it eventually starts binding things up and your gun will stop working. So make sure you're using the bright basic nails and if you do have to use the galvanized nails with it, expect to have issues and expect to have to clean it. With an air nailer, the air blows all this crap out of that whenever it shoots these nails and it's not an issue. But with the cordless nailers, there's none of that air and um, this junk from the galvanized just builds up in there. So keep that in mind. So lastly, for this quick little video, I just wanna show you the difference on nailing with a cordless 15 gauge versus an air 15 gauge with this style tip. With this style tip, I have to press and fire on every shot. I also have to really control how it can hold it down and then fire, but I have to be very careful about how hard I'm hitting that or this tip will dent my material. With this air nailer, I can just go to town, hold the trigger in and bump it all day long and I can actually use this big rubber tip in the gun itself to help push that trim in and I find it sucks it to the wall much harder. So you can also see the speed difference there using an air nailer. I can shoot on trim much, much faster with this than, than with the cordless guns. So kind of answering the question on my thoughts, cordless guns definitely have their place when it's convenient but for the bulk of the nailing that I do, as long as uh, it's not a huge pain to drag the hose around, I gotta go for the hose because it's less wear and tear on my body and it sets the nails a lot better. So hopefully you guys found this video helpful. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section. I definitely don't have all the answers, but I do enjoy having the discussion and um, just seeing what everybody else thinks. So thanks for watching guys, we'll see you next time.